organized politics. The vital concern with politics, however, may be sin in the development of Dalit Panthers, an organization founded uh, most probably in 1972-73, by writers to protest both atrocities against untouchables in the villages and the ineffectiveness of the Republican Party, founded by Ambedkar just before the death in 1956. The Dalit Panthers, named after the Black Panthers in the United States, is still in existence. Although its effective militant stance has been reduced and it is split by means of its leadership, hostilities, enmities. The founders of the Panthers, Namdeo Thasal and Raja Dhale, were poets. They were committed both to literature and to literature as a weapon against social justice. The headline, Years of the Panthers, 1972-73, may also be said to mark the true beginning of the Dalit Shaita movement in India. All the individual writers had applied you know, uh, uh, their particular resources and their talents later. The Buddhist version came almost 30 years after a great Shatagraha for water in Mahad in 1928, an event which many use as a poetic image for protest. And after years of fruitless attempts at temple entry. Now, before the Buddhist conversion, there was movement literature, quote unquote, movement literature. There was polemics, biography, folk songs, and poems in abundance. And all these intended to further the cause of equality among the common people of India, irrespective of caste caste divides. The street literature, quote unquote, street literature, still continues slim booklets sold at conferences and on Buddha Jayanti and Ambedkar Jayanti in Maharashtra. These particular booklets have become popular in Bengal as well. A few days later, you will go to the book fair where you have, where we will see small booklets. Many of them are actually being created by quote-unquote Dalit or casteist people. Now, this is how the very notion of the literature of the Dalit sprang in India, mainly germinating from its hot bed in Maharashtra and coming over as a sort of an influence to the other parts of the world. But when it comes to the art artistic dispensation of uh, Dalitism, a Dalit literature, Sharan Kumar Limbale, whom you have already mentioned in your leaflet, the content that you have produced from your institution, joins an uh, issue among Dalits and the non-Dalits. He, in fact, he is more for Dalit kind of literature rather than non-Dalit writing for the Dalits. But whatever it is, we should keep in mind that if we had not experienced the real marginal conditions of living like a Dalit, it is possible for imaginatively participate in Dalit life, livelihoods. For example, I am not a Dalit myself. I am a Brahmin. I am a Hindu Brahmin. But then what makes me talk about Dalit? And what makes me feel about Dalit and experience the kind of segregation, the kind of torture that we have been meted out to them? Is it simply a political stance that I am pursuing? This is a question that requires to be introspected. Discourse does not simply validate the kind of acts that I am performing. 
who had given me the right to speak about the leads in this particular platform who had given you the right to speak about the leads if you are not on the lead is a question which is a misnomer i don't think this can be a question at all in fact when measuring the significance according to sharan kumar limbale of an artistic creation only artistic values should be employed he says that but at the same time he discards the notion of the leads having the power to write with artistic fluency in other words according to ps rage art should be considered only as art this is what limbale says the literature being the lead cannot demand separate artistic yardsticks at all if their literature is great it will stand any test any time artistic values are not destroyed because they have been rejected and according to balakrishna khawatekar another famous marathi critic if these values are rejected the literature will be deprived of a framework for evaluation khawatekar insists that the literature must be assessed on the basis of traditional critical theories there are universal values embedded in literature which never change there are contentions that arise certain questions that arouses certain that arouse certain questions how is the literature to be critiqued criticized based on these universal values a very important question that requires to be addressed how is the literature to be uh, determined in terms of its social status what are these literary yardsticks how were they to be developed did they originate in india this particular yardsticks is aesthetic yardsticks or where they imported from western literature do these literary standards change with time do they remain universally eternal if they do change when and under what circumstances have critics prepared some mold or measure of these yardsticks for literary explications but such questions cannot be answered with the words universal values cannot be refused again limbale the late writers find this literary criteria obsolete they believe that traditional marathi aesthetics which is based primarily on sanskrit or english literary theories cannot do justice to the literature the act of imagination called art is impermanent and ever changing literature changes with changing culture it is diachronic even in synchronic uh, literature you have constant movements of different kinds of diverse forms and generic pattern so can the lit- it literature itself form a genre by itself and like you of course and as the years stick change the relationship between literature and criticism will be fractured in india there are tremendous differences in levels and processes of tests what is tasteful to one person may not appear so to another in these circumstances it will be wrong to insist on fixed standards this is what limbale finally tries to propound like literature criticism too is apt to change just as the course of literature has changed from one period to another so has the mood of criticism to assert that someone's writing will be called literature only when uh, our literary standards can be imposed on it is a sign of cultural dictatorship the yardsticks of literature do not remain stand still for too long 
with changing trans literature changes. We know that. Now, the two basic contention, of, of course, it has become a little uh, obsolete now, but I won't say that it has become completely obsolete. It even pertains to the present contradictions, the present controversies on the kind of criticism that the literature should form. One is the literature should be evaluated on the basis of universal uh, literary values. The other is literary standards do not remain fixed for all time. Therefore, the criticism of the literature cannot be based on traditional measures. The lit critics are in agreement with the latter because they have broken with traditional middle-class values. M. N. Wankere holds that Dalit writers should abhor values determined by middle-class writers and critics. Even if, even if uh, uh, there was something fixed or definite about the criteria for evaluating uses of the imagination, a uh, mechanistic approach must be avoided. Otherwise, the practice of criticism will be impeded. Critics hit literature and criticism is supposed to uphold today without further. Madam, thank you, madam. Thank you for inviting me. I have another assignment. All the best. All the best. Bye bye. It's my pleasure today to be here at this very, very timely and very, very relevant seminar that has been organized by the Department of English, Budapur Women's College, and Budapur Government College. I thank the principal, Dr. Mohan Nakanjigan, for organizing and supporting this initiative of the two English departments. Once again, I repeat, very relevant and very, very timely theme of the seminar. Now, to go directly into the topic of today's seminar, the literature in English and English translations. There are two questions we find that are thrown up by the seminar topic. One, Dalit literature, so why translate Dalit literature into English? And secondly, sorry, why translate Dalit literature at all? And secondly, why translate Dalit literature into English? Both the questions sort of dovetail into one most important question the significance of Dalit literature. In general, if you look at the work of translation, the established the rationale of translation has more or less been well established over the ages in our country as well as the world. It opens up territory that 
would have remained unfamiliar, unknown to us. We are usually at, this is usually at a distance from our past and experiences. So, much of the fun of translation is in fact this, that you sort of step into another person's shoes and relate the experiences, the understandings that that person, she or he, has had through her or his life. It is a kind of, in some ways, it is a kind of taking upon yourself the role of an actor to act out the reality and others' story. So this makes translation often very, very tempting for the translator. Uh, in many ways, uh, I felt this experience of the translation of the translator is greater when the voice that I am translating belongs not to my terrain, so to say, not to my class, gender, race, <coughs> culture, language, religion, whatever, whatever you have it. It becomes even greater, the distance becomes even greater and maybe the translation even a little bit more difficult then, when the voice that I'm translating is from a category that we generally consider the other of the category where I am situated. So a female translator from the southern class and from upper or middle upper classes we find that this is greatly aggravated when translating a voice that is made from a lower class and from the lower class. So this is where translating the literature in particular becomes different. In a recent uh, uh, seminar last year held at Hyderabad, J.D. Pawar said that the literature is not a genre of literature or an organization. He said it's a movement. The literature is part of a movement. In fact, if you look at any minority literature, all minority literatures have always been part of different political movements. So that the minority literatures have in reality been political literatures. So by taking the initiative and beginning any translation which you may do, you make yourself part of that movement. You decide to place your stakes within that movement. Not just translation, just by deciding to hold the seminar in your college, you have acted upon a political choice. You have made to identify a certain kind of political choice, A, to identify a certain kind of literature and Dalit literature. B, to increase with the verdict that Dalit literature then cannot be studied as part of general literature because it will not be given space within that general literature. There's nothing new in this. All margins have had to begin their journey like this. They have to fight their way into the consciousness of the mainstream in a similar fashion. Women have done it, you are doing it. So any, any minority community, when they write literature, they have to first stake claim to a certain territory. Whenever you speak of literature, of the literature, or when we used to speak to the earlier two phase, a pushback when you try to mark out that territory. Why do you need to demarcate it, you will say? Present it as literature. If it is good enough, it will be published. If it is good enough, it will be recognized by the readers. Why do you have to have a separate space as a black literature, etc.? Now such comments take a rather simplistic view of the market. That if you have merit, you will win the race. That the word merit itself is a loaded word. It requires coaching, practice sessions, time, space, a room of one's own, as Virginia Woolf has said. In other words, many, many, many things which require the support of finance, which require the support of money and connections, or maybe both. Money and connections, or maybe both. Ajita Subramanian in her book, The Task of Merit in the Engineering Education in India, draws on archival research and qualitative interviews that she conducts. 
Today's the IIT is as a case study to reflect on the accumulation of caste-based capital and its histories. What is the meaning of caste-based capital? Caste-based capital, capital you know is money. What is caste-based capital? Caste-based capital are different kinds of cultural capital, social capital. The type of capital that a person may have when you are born into a family where you see the collected works of Shakespeare in the book that's within your home, even before you have lunch to read. Caste-based capital may be when, as you are growing up, you hear the address of your home through in one or two sentences in English. So that The journey from writing to publishing and often impossible is one that initiated Dalit writer whose language, subject of writing, both the language and the subject which she is writing upon are alien and perhaps even hostile to the perhaps upper even hostile to the upper caste publisher. It is through somewhat aggressive publishing through the publishing houses or maybe little magazine publishers. The Dalit books finally get into print. And it is after the marginal literatures have become more or less known that one may begin to hope that they will be included within the broader category of literature. So, as I was saying, Dalit literature, writing, translating, holding seminars on, all of these move towards recognizing that there is this separate shock of Dalit literature which cannot be subsumed within literature today. It's a political realization and therefore we need to nurture it, nourish it, till Dalit literature, like women's literature, like black literature, is able to stand on its own feet. We come to the second question. Why write in English? Or why translate into English? One answer to this may be gleaned from Ambedkar's Maha speech. Ambedkar's Maha speech is the speech which he gave uh, in 1927 beside the Chandra Lake. He led a group of Dalits and some non Dalits to the lake to draw water from the Chandra Lake to drink. The Chandra Lake was forbidden to the Dalits. Only the Hindus could draw drinking water or any kind of water from the Chandra Lake. And in that speech, if you read that speech, it's a longish speech. You will be surprised to find that Ambedkar brings in the Delphi Political French National Assembly in 1789. Uh, he speaks of these different kinds of movements against injustice that are taking place in different parts of the world, not India, distant from India. And you catch yourself asking, why is Ambedkar bringing in all these unknown histories into his speech? In all likelihood, the majority of the people who have gathered with Ambedkar that day would have been, if not totally and illiterate, somewhat uneducated. It is unlikely that they would have known of the Delphi political or they would have known of 1789, French Revolution, what the French nationalists and they decided, and all these details. Whenever we talk to a person, we always make our words fit into a certain conversation that will be possible between that person and myself. We do not usually speak of things which will not be understood easily by the listeners. So why is Ambedkar, a brilliant intellectual, a brilliant leader, talking of things to his followers which would be difficult for them to understand? Can we quote a little bit from Ambedkar? Gentlemen, he says, you will understand that the significance of the struggle which we have begun is not that the Satyagraha Committee has invited you to Mahar merely to drink water from the Chakta Lake. It is not as if drinking water of the Chakta Lake will make us immortal. We have survived well enough all these days without drinking it. We are not going to the Chandra Lake merely to drink its water. We are going to the lake to assert that we too are human beings like others. 
it must be clear that this meeting has been called to set up the norm of equality. And by the time you finish reading that speech, you realize that possibly what Ambedkar was doing was that he was trying to make the Dalit, small, tiny Dalit groups in Maharashtra realize that the struggle was not theirs alone, that the struggle was a far larger struggle that went beyond the territory of what was at that time India or the Indian subcontinent. It went all over the world. So even like them, had been waging struggles like them against injustice all over the world. And these other movements have succeeded. When you get to know that, when you suddenly realize that I'm not the only one struggling, or my family or my village is not the only one struggling, that different people have waged this struggle and won, it does something to your confidence. And that is possibly where this link language of English comes in. Writing in English, as Andres does, or Suraj Karate, the rock star of caste uh, studies now, does, gives one the ability to widen your horizon and to connect with a larger, wider network. Because as a writer, you will want to ascertain that the book that you write gets the visibility it deserves. And this visibility does not always come with writing a good book. There are many, many very good books which have gone into a book. So when you write a book, when a book is authored by a Dalit writer, when a book is made as part of the literature, it is not enough to write it. It, is, it also has to be pushed into visibility to make it count, to make it stick. So Tilthurat, when he was addressing the students who had gathered at the protest site of the University of Hyderabad after Rohit Tandula's death, spoke somewhat harshly, because he too was very emotionally caught up at that time, and said that tears are not enough. Tears will be here today, tears will fade tomorrow. If you want to bring in change, you have to bring in change through the policies. And one of the policies of writing the literature possibly is writing it or translating it into a language that will enable us to connect with each other over distances, over time. As the writers and translators take the literature from individual effort to a much wider horizon, they are moving towards this through the English language. Because this becomes a step taken to calibrate the divisions which are already existing around us. It gives a certain structure to the caste system, ethnicity that is all around us. So what you are going to include, how you are going to write it, what you are going to translate, all these are very, very significant decisions that have to be taken by you. Will it be Marxist Dalit literature? Will it be ecologically sustained Dalit literature? Like Kodani Thakur's Aadhaar Bill is ecologically, is talking about the ecology. Or will it be any other? There are so many approaches within Dalit literature. In creating this literature through English or through English translations, what you are doing is you are creating a kind of a corpus of literature, a corpus of literature that exists not just within our India or within your state, but actually is usually limited to largely our state or some parts of the Indian territory, but something which can transcend the Indian territory. Susan Sondag, in her book regarding the fate of others, says, Collective memory, memory, but the stimulus that is, groups define themselves over, over time by agreeing upon what they hold to be important, to which story they accord eminence, which anxieties, which values they share. So, in turn, the individual memories of the Dalit writers get shaped and reshaped through the interactions with other people, institutions, media, and they put together they begin to reflect the shape and the discourses of this heterogeneous territory. That is, literature is not a homogeneous territory, though we use one term. Just as black literature, women's literature has a few realities within it, so does the literature. So how do you attempt visibility through English translation? Translation 
immediately brings to you thoughts of the politics of translation. Who holds greater power, the translator who comes from maybe the academia institution or the original writer who is from the community and possibly not as powerfully placed in society? But in spite of all of this, Dalit activists, Dalit intellectuals seem to be of one mind that English is a helper. The English language is one that will help us move forward. Let me give you one problem that I faced when translating Dalit literature. There was this, there was this, there was this uh, term that I came to about uh, how rice is made, not the rice that we find in our place, but the entire journey of rice from the paddy to the rice as it comes upon your thalis. It's a long journey and none of these words are available in English. When I asked Kolari about it, she gave me a long lecture on what happens to the rice. Now, if I try to put that kind of explanation into the story, it is going to ruin the story. But I was not being able to do without it. I didn't know what to do. So I approached Shudhi Chakubur, who also deals dealt a lot with marginal literatures. And Shudhi Chakubur gave me an example of a term which we call Gopali. He said Gopali has no, even Bengalis don't know what Gopali is. What is Gopali? When a family, because of very, very bad circumstances, is forced to sell off their cow. What they do is they cut a little bit of the hairs which hang at the end of the cow's tail. The cow becomes like a family record, right? But they are, they are bound to, they are having to sell it off, they are compelled because they don't have the money to keep the cow anymore. So it is out of affection. This is likely to keep a lot of hair of a person in the And this few hairs, they hang over the place where the cow used to stay. It's like a memento of this family that of whom they have to let go. Now this is Gopal. To which I'm going to say, what was I going to do? I just let it as Gopal. I couldn't explain it because if I, he said it reminded me of Mohish. Because he was a, from a Muslim person. A Muslim person whose cow the Muslim will have been forced to sell. The entire story is tragic. If I go into the picture, we can read the story. He's written about the person. So he said, if you can't, if you find explaining, translating something is good in your work, just keep the original words. If the person is interested, the person will go back and find out the meaning. So translation and the politics of translation is a difficult area to go into. So I think we to speak on that uh, in greater detail. Still, we find when we are dealing with the main experiences, the Dalit males who move into the public world of professions, trading, business, their writing is a translation and the writings of the Dalit women whose lives are steeped in tradition are steeped in tradition, food, rituals, any very particularized things, particular to one. All these one village, one group, one caste group. And that becomes even more tragic if you translate the women's uh, words. So, what am I then trying to say? Is the romantic space not enough? Possibly not. Or maybe we could explain it like this that it has to be, they are like the parallel rails of the railway tracks. The vernacular is to move, but along with the vernacular, you have to have English moving along with it. Because the journey must begin within the vernacular space, but it has to reach beyond that vernacular space. Basically, for two, re two reasons. One, and both of them deal with this concern for visibility. One is, that people do not read too much. So depending upon just your vernacular space may not give you enough readers. And two, there is a difficulty to reach the larger, wider audience with your vernacular writing. Rupal Mulli, who is a native elderly man now, when he was young, started reading out this uh, periodical newspaper. And he would go around, he would go around with this bundle of butakas and he would give his paper for free and if you say Jodi Koro, I'll give that a reader So that is how you have to get the readers into your space. 
Or that kind of space gives you a narrow space. English gives you a wider space. So there's a huge potential for literature. And such literature holds the consciousness of the number of readers. Now the readers who have already decided that this is their interest area will come into it. But there are readers who you have to bring in, who will read, who will understand and who will read, who will realize that this is the area where they want to place their stakes in. Um, the urban, there is this urban rural divide in our country, and much of the Dalit literature comes from the still comes from the rural area. We often call it as different as two nations. Rural India does not get visibility in our media, despite the fact that the larger population, that is where the larger population stays. Uh, let me skip a little bit over here. So, what is the bottom line? The bottom line, basically, what I'm saying is that the subject that you're writing upon. Maybe of mammoth relevance, maybe of great importance, maybe very good writing, but that does not guarantee you visibility unless you yoke it with this power language of English. The literature today, by, by bringing the literature into the syllabi, we have been able to bring it somewhat to the forefront of our institutions, and that is something which we have been able to do largely still through English. Because it is so huge, common sense should be a greater relevance to the whole country. But we know that is not how the world functions. The issues that get. But we know that that is not how the world functions. The issues that get prominence and the issues that find readers are those that concern the elite. Yeah. So nothing that Chandra Prasad Bhan, I think, made this up in English. He holds a pen in one hand, he the constitution uh, in North India to the goddess of English. Given us that last here. So English is a language of power, a language of the elite. Because it is so usually elite, because it is associated with and it is complicit with patterns of desire which I'm going to push talks about. This is the patterns of desire which are framed by the steel and the glass and the concrete of the cities. English is a language which can come there, so it is a language which is close to power. Um, <laughs> We often find that society sort of brings you to an area where they give you books, they give you an education, and they give you, they tell you, they will give you a certificate which will give you a job. And they expect that with this for the larger society, nothing could be further from the truth. If you look at the news items, at the corridors of these, items, at the corridors of these, uh, very, very influential elite institutions. You will know the number of people who, the number of young students who kill themselves by committing suicide. All of us teachers are aware, have been through students in our class who will drop out because they feel they are not good enough. Whereas there are students who are far bigger who will continue because they are not able to have that confidence. And very often we find that the students who drop, despite not getting very bad marks, despite getting average marks, but who cannot muster up their confidence, we often find that these students But what Zanula lacked was not lack of food, it was not lack of books, it was a lack of hope, it was a lack of being able to feel confident that he is going to be that they have set 
Delhi to be bring this Dalit literature into English through translation and give it the kind of power that it needs in order to sustain itself for another two or three decades before we can bring it in English. Probably to you, people like you, young people like you, Dalit and non Dalit, who will write, who will translate, and who believe in the constitutional value of equality for all. So armed with English, because all of you are in the English department, armed with English and your own vernacular, in your head and in your hands, you are much more privileged than many, many other people. Uh, you have access to English and you have access to the vernacular. And because you know higher education English students, higher education English students, you have access to publishing houses and therefore you can amplify these voices by writing and translating. Maybe these are some of the strategies that we need to use. And when we use these strategies, it is then possible, possibly, possibly it is then that we can channel our Red Hooks has called, had called the killing rage. Red Hooks talks, and I went with the story, Red Hooks talks of this experience which she has when she holds a plane. Uh, uh, she and this other black girl, they go to play and they find that another white man has been given But they have come and they have sat first, but this white man insists and he shows that the same seat lover that he also has. The stewardess comes and despite the two girls showing that uh, Ben Hooks' friend has this same seat number, she requests her to rise and place her an alternate seat and allows this man, this white man, to sit in that place. Now, Ben Hooks, who is sitting beside this white man now, feels what she calls is a killing rage. And this is what she says. She feels this rage that uh, almost overwhelms her. And uh, she says, she begins, it was, it was these sequences of racialized incidents involving black women that intensified my rage against this white man sitting next to me. I felt a killing rage. I wanted to stab him softly to shoot him with a gun that I wished I had in my purse. And as I watched his pain, I would say to him tenderly, racism hurts. But with no outlet, my rage turned to me and I began to weep. We learned when we were very little that black people could die from feeling rage and expressing it to wrong white folks. We learned to choke down our rage. This process of repression was aided by the existence of our separate neighborhoods, blacks and whites. In all the black schools, churches, jeep joints, etc., we granted ourselves the luxury of forgetfulness. Within the comfort of those black spaces, we did, we did not constantly think about white supremacy and its impact upon our social status. We lived a large part of our lives not thinking about white folks. We lived in denial. And in living that way, we were able to mute our rage. Black folks, this change now and then. We are now and then with ourselves link this event to the myriad abuses and humiliations black folks suffered daily when we crossed the tracks and did what we had to do with and for white folks to make a living. To express black contest in a white town was suicidal. Every black was in it. Rage was reserved for life at home for one another, or towards of his one's own self, as the women said. Now, we begin to realize as we talk about the past, and as more and more of Dalit writers move out into the larger, into the larger world, we begin to realize that past is a problem, a huge problem for us. But like Ambedkar had given examples of other places. Other we do need to sort of hold hands with these many people. In fact, this is not something new that we'll be doing. It is more or less what the Dalit Panthers Manifesto talks about. When it says that within the Dalit umbrella, we can include Shaykh's class, Shaykh's rise, even the women, even the lower classes who feel themselves to be Dalit. All these people can come under the Dalit umbrella to make it an even more part of the session for a political movement. And I'm going to start. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am.
look at Jyoti Bala's rock band. Partition throws the family to immigrate to India and take shelter in the refugee camp. This is a blood chilling discourse where Jyoti Bala had to stay in refugee camps. And these books, these types of books will give you and look to you. Two types of your own possibly, possibly totally unfamiliar for all of us sitting here because we have never seen a refugee camp like Cooper's camp, Shiromoni camp, and many other camps. And this book gives documentation on the refugee camps and how the climate was, climate means, what kind of how the relationships were born and what sort of things were there. My book is captured black black books at different points. Actually, the question was what are the subjects of your poems? That's why they found your poems. That's the answer. The life of a refugee is struggling for survival. I have experienced truthful marginalization as a Dalit and as a Now, this is the book, original Bangla book, the title of the Bangla book, Shikor Shreda Jibo. And look at the title translation. Of course, you can think that title is all translation. And remember, title is not always choice of the translator or by the uh, author. But this was our choice. A life of Roger, a Bengali refugee, Bengali Dali refugee remembers. Okay, and look at the subtitle. Actually, there was. A subtitle would pass through the and Dastan. So, 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 as a reality. Okay. It tends to, to a real. Oh, you can easily understand. We skipped the Bengali word actually because it was mentioning. Because don't use the word pacha, pacha. Don't use the You can we cannot use the utter after endlessness of pacha, pacha, tail, tail, tail. Is a distance from the very difficult. Many of you, when you translate, you can express in a better way, maybe with English But we could not make it possible. Bacha, bacha, bacha! Thus begins Bengali Dalit writer in Manas on the back on my The book's first volume is now translated. A China Academy initiative. I was only five years old when we had to run away from uh, our village in East Pakistan. The bloody scenes are in my mind as a girl on a sock rock. The octogenarian. We look at 80 plus now, age. This is Professor Raj Kumar's comment on the book. And if you can have a look of the book, and a tale of a Delhi victim of India's partition. A tale of a Delhi victim of India's partition. Translated as, and look at the last three words of this particular comment nationalism. Fraternity and identity. And all these Dalit books, and of course, books of refugee, 
and deteriorate is the very important perceptions. The book has very curious range of, you know, it starts from and then it comes forth and goes back. It's like sometimes it returns to past and as a kind of special kind of narration of that time. So the projection of time, because these are coming back to past. Very interesting. And of course, Jodi Bala has a firm knowledge of how to narrate a to perfection. To perfection is a state of faithful record of life that he wants to narrate. Look, the one of the you know, chapter title is Septic Ooms. You can easily understand those who are the students who, what are the but we need to do that in Bangla or by Bangla expression. Septicun, septic takabal. Septicun, septic takabal. Who wish he had a potter motor way that, right? But a potter, she potter and also get potter. Let's look at the choir. Titles of each chapter and the minute description of each chapter is like that. This is Professor Manish Rilal's take on the book, and Professor Lal actually says, Powerful autobiography, very powerful autobiography, because the reading of the autobiography is a pure power man. How? Because we come to know in terms of the life of the big body. Of the big body. Because when our Bengali identity comes into our forefront, we come to know like you know, Uttam Kumar coming with a fish, holding a fish, and Rasha go like one hand. And of course, why do you beautifully decorated uh, white uh, trouser and of course Punjabi? So that is one Bangani. The other Bangani is incomplete if you don't read text like this. So if you read Gandhi, if you read your Indiana, your Bangaliana Indiana is five So you'll have to read as well as, as, well as, as annihilation of caste. Any of knowledge of in that discussion. Because from the childhood we are taught to not to see the full truth. Yes, it is a one is the father of creation, one is also the uncle of creation. You will have your father in your family, you will have your uncle, as well as your you need a complete family teacher. Because otherwise, one person cannot give you the complete upbringing what you can do. That's why you need to look into whatever you have learned and whatever you have not learned and whatever is not shown is also a politics. I can talk about a lot of things, a lot of leaders, but I remain absent from Nehru. You understand my absence is more pronounced than what Words. So, my dear students, so your what you want to say is important, but what you don't want to say is more important. Okay. Now, powerful autobiography because, of course, it is it will empower you and it will give you power to know your know your India, know your regard society to the fullest extent, and look last. The last line of the commentary by Professor La, that he says, Dalit discourse with honesty and deep understanding. Of course, what Shukrani was thinking at, can a non Dalit write a Dalit text? Or can I write, can I write pregnancy literature? 
can I produce a, a character when dealing with an upright man? But of course, you know, if we go into marketing like that, it will be very difficult to portray the full truth of the secondary experience of others as well. But of course, there is a point of honesty. The Maori is in New Zealand, the Gaur is in Australia, go to any minority culture, if you are not born and brought up in that culture, and I will let that stop. But remember, no one can deny the sun rising. No one can deny the sun rising somewhere. I have taken the place from the poison and play a very important way putting these uh, that is the movement. Honestly and understand how to translate to be to be a kind of preoccupied preoccupied with the text immediate environment. No, we are trying to do many things. What is that can refer to project? We that with project. Uh, uh, by Kofi Krishna. The text really changed my life. You will you will like to return to the text again and again. Because you will rise in love in the text. I don't say fall in love. Okay. Rise in love in the text. I recommend all of you to read, but reading is a shocking exercise because in every page you will start because the language is wrong that immediately part Bangla that right is the Bangla thrice removed from here. So when you want to create the place which I have not seen in my life. Very difficult, very tough. Even my experience and the whole Shiprati, she is one of the leading translators of India. And uh, our experiences say that living with the man, because we translated Manohar Babu, Manohar Babu's text, we could create an environment where they feel that Babu can translate. We had the confidence. But some texts will take you to a place. The place is full of water because it's in Bangladesh, part of Bangladesh, which is totally under the alliance type of me to create the place. Jamdani Rupokata starts with a village formation and the villages are breaking. So wonderfully constructed over right. Very difficult to take up because we have been struggling to translate for years. So, whether it is translation or translation, it's a big question, of course. We are the professors of English, we may have the knowledge of English language, but we may not have the knowledge of the culture. This is Jatin Bala's uh, this book, very recent, came out. And we'll look at the cover photograph. Because cover photograph is also very important as a translated book. This was not about the cover photograph we copied from the original book because the translation should also book cover should also indicate the text, the thought of the text. Again, the five-year-old Bala and possibly we more than his brain could at this point of time, he came to share the mission and then started his all life in the refugee camps. This is again a life, unless you, if you are going to translate, we not we were trans, actually we have been working on this part for some time. We visited Cooper's camp, Shiromani camp and many other camps, Kunti transit camps. By person to know when we started to work on the daily diets, 
I think a few decades back. So our knowledge into that gave us confidence to translate that the life of a refugee camp to the reading world. Because I tell you, if you don't visit that can write and translate the text, and a match between the experience and the reality. In order to create the real, you know, aura, real life aura, real life aura, tales like limit in the names of our science, mathematics, limits, tales to create the original. You need to be in the familiar place for some time and then come out with the translation. Uh, this is this is again the my family split at Shiada Station, says Fada. This is actually from the text we translate. Look at the last, Look at the last paragraph of our translation. Now begin. Now begin. Language is very critical. To whom I am translating? Am I translating it for an Indian audience? Or am I translating it for a foreign reader? So, the language is also very As a child labor was often physically abused, the day when I fell down by my head, I resolved I would study and get myself an education, he says. This is not only the text of past separation, illiteracy, it's a text of and emancipation. Look at the timeline to map the book uh, holistically. 1949, Bala was born to this the timeline. If we have the timeline, it will be easier for us to grasp the text. Look at the contents again. Look at the 17 number content and uh, the weeping of fallen leaves. Blue bubble files touch over the history moves. So you can understand the translation of the chapter gates are very important to do. Look at 11 partition because because we failed to translate the original word to capture the meaning of that particular uh, verse in the chapter. Therefore, you can understand that is the way to the policy. Partition, inside. The chapter deals with inside and partition. The noise of bloodshed. The noise of bloodshed. Clear up and noise again. Understand? So, so metaphorical. But we will have to be true to the text. It's a big challenge. How will you transfer this knowledge into another book? These are also the contents. 27 chapters. And as she probably mentioned, the Another way that you can use gloss. You can write in the text itself or you can gloss. And Bengali words used in translation. Bengali words used in translation because while in translation, we kept certain Bengali words in the translated text. Now, as I think, you can. Ambedkar's actually supremely important. The first thing we need education. Unless education, you can know agitate. For what you will agitate, you should know first what is the reason of agitation. And they organize. Remember, the person in the in this particular slide studied the US and he was a professor of law. He gave us how to form organization, how to agitate, and how to get your things done in a different culture. 
he imbibed all that, came back, and actually he made this movement possible. Okay. When you are in the college literature, you are into movement, as Sri Prabhu said, you are all to also uh, you are an activist. Okay. So you are not a scholar, you are an activist. You are not a reader of the book, you are an activist. This is, of course, our modern principal sir, no, sorry, principal vice chancellor in his uh, he wrote that as mentioned. And uh, look at the highlight, exile of the Namashundros. But dear students, don't be misguided. There are so many uh, tasks in within Bengal. Namashundra is one of them. Namashundra is one of them. There are so many. Okay. Again, the translation begins by Abu 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 Abu. Right. You can understand. So, how will you portray this emotionally charged content? This is very difficult. You have to you know, transfer this emotion to another code. One foot to another code, the transfer of emotion is very difficult. Fire! 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 Hail! 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 Hail!
then my express my gratitude to the organizers, to the Women's College, principal and the faculty members, and the other students. Today's uh, seminar, so uh, that you can understand. And 
And once again, you know, it's the meal. Once again, the cultural meal. The way we are being brought up. The, the English education, then uh, the way we look at things, the European way of looking at things, the aesthetic, the, the, the aesthetic that we understand, and that aestheticism is not necessarily or should not be like this. Because it was the colonial masters the imposed upon us, they thought that they are foolish. Civilization does not uh, look upon like their way. It is, we have our own story. We need to hesitate that what I have said, the encroachment, we are absolutely fine at ease when we are in the reality. But when I get into the other, that Sikram Pandit has already said, the most of our uh, Sikram community, they are living in the rural areas. The disturbance happens when we get into the rural uh, urban areas. Because the moment you are the sum, in the in the staff room, in the classroom, your peer group, they are discussing, the moment you enter the classroom, the moment you get into the uh, staff room, the discussion stop. So that is the reality. You, you, you can be a normal writer, normal active, very active basis, but you cannot understand that way. I am just reading out a uh, portion uh, from the Magalashi, the outpost of the Liban. Then you will understand the little bit of translation because translation is the only uh, you know, breeze that you can connect because you don't know Marathi, you don't know the uh, language of that Mahar community you to speak. Because, because you know Bengali, that doesn't mean you, you, can, you can understand the language that you are able to speak. Or the or the many people or the uh, people living in Sundarbans, in Kaling, or in uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, eastern side of uh, uh, India. So you, you you cannot understand. That is one. And uh, the highest girls. This is the picnic. Picnic is the other other much the beginning part. The school boy, little kid. They, they did not understand what the reality is. They are forced to understand where they belong to. So this is the scenario of the picnic. They were sitting outside. The high caste girls from our village offered us their curry and pakaris. Pakaris is a high kind of beauty. Pakaris are without touching us. The thought that they might have seen our food upset me. I was ashamed of my food and felt guilty eating it. The hikers, boys and girls from the village were eating together. The girls sat close to the teachers. They were all chatting and we sat like owls watching them. We had before us only the crumbs of home with each morsel. I chewed the lips of the laughing girls. At last, we finished eating. The teacher asked the hikers boy and girls to collect the leftovers on a piece of paper and give it to us. I and Parse, Parse, one of his friends, carried the bundle of leftover food on the way back. The hikers boy and girls were laughing and joking. But our whole attention was on the bundle, the food. The food is the absolute marker to trace the literature. Food and the slang. So, uh, Malia carried the bundle of Bakhari on his head, and we, the Mahabhais, followed him excitedly like hungry vultures. At last, we gathered in, in Malia's farm and opened the bundle. It contained tons of different kinds of food, and their spicy smell filled the air. We squatted in a circle and stuffed ourselves greedily. We had never tasted food like that before. We were all lucky. Our stomachs were as busy as a bear sack. The important part coming next, when I got home. When I got home, I told my mother, I told my mother, like the victim of a family. Why can't you get at least a small 
how you can say responsibility as a as an administrator that we have to translate all those things. This is our responsibility. Okay, so they need to be visible. And, and, and if, you, if you look at the Dalit literature, we now understand those are the If you look at those things, you will understand that these are all autobiographical elements. Because this is the lived life. And, and any kind of that part, and this is also a loaded word, I should not mention the minority literature or minority movement. You, you will see most of the time those minority literature is copyrighted. Hatred, LGBT, or something like that. You will see. But there is a you know, stark difference between uh, all this uh, movement and the minority because uh, caste is something that we cannot analyze. We are born as a single caste. It's not that it's a religion, it's a caste. And, and what the Dalit is actually has perceived as a chandal, but the idea of chandal is not very familiar in our part of the country. There is, uh, you know, many uh, other countries. But in Bihar, in Uttar Pradesh, in Maharashtra, in Uttar Pradesh, you know, the caste is a very, very rooted uh, problem. And, and because of, you know, there are some uh, social movements here in our part because of the senior company came in here for the English education, European level of thought, then communist people who in the country for 34 years. So because of that, there is a kind of ease here in uh, uh, Bengal. But the politics is here that what we understand that we are talking about refusing, talking about uh, partition. Partition is also a, an interesting marker to trace Bengali literature. Because we are talking about refusing, what is the, what is the relationship between refusing and the literature? All the refugees, they are Dalit. Then all these Babus. What our future uh, we will uh, tell so they are not Dalit. So Why? Because of the education. Because of closeness. Because of closeness to the power. They realize. They realize. They got to know when India is going to divide. And because of the before and its uh, information, they flock earlier. Before the research, if you look at a ceremony camp, or you know, a uh, canning camp, or, or, or the people uh, in Delhi, or in uh, Rai in Karnataka, or in uh, Nandu, uh, uh, that is. Uh, the uh, uh, was there first time. Uh, 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 Everywhere you can see our thing. Uh, I think I have already told you that Namasutras, it's not the Namasutras. There are Kumros, Pools, there are so many Asimukas group. And if you look at these people are coming after 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 partition, they are coming as Hindu people. Most of the Hindu people, or, or if they are, not, they are not a Hindu people, they are the Muslim people. Because of the Hindi, they, they became Hindu. Just one, one week ago, I came across some people in Kharagpur. Uh, I went to Kharagpur uh, for their event, uh, even business competition. And I was in the recent my habit, I was actually loitering outside the campus. Uh, you know, getting into the villages, talking to them. Most of the people, they have their title B. It was curiously uh, interesting. I asked them, and one people uh, told me that, come to the darkness, I would say. And I might have worked in the evening. Uh, 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 that some of them, they are the 
they are Christ. And they are coming right now from Bangladesh. If they live uh, in the city of Munga or Kusidhar or Hasnabar or Kandy, they will be located. And then the energy is going to happen. Okay, so that's why they are coming over here. And they are Hindu. In so that is happening everywhere. So I will uh, end my. Uh, I was thinking of giving the PowerPoint. Uh, the, so you can get it, it, it will be there in the system.
তারারে সবাই তারা মুক্তি দিয়েছিল তারা যেটা এসেছিল পরমশ্রু নিয়ে জীবনে তাই মুক্তার ফুলের ভিতর জলের ভিতর পূজা সব নিশ্চিত হইল তারা কথা বলে সবাই কুমার সরকারি পাড়া সবাই কুমার সরকারি পাড়া তবু এখন ওর কমাটে কিন্তু ভাই হাতে পাশে কিন্তু বাবা হাতে चालय
but autobiography is hell. But also there are some beautiful, aesthetically satisfying novels, prose works, poetry by all these amazing, amazing writers. Don't forget that. Huh? Their life narration comes fast because you know, their lives are very different from any of us. Therefore, that comes at the utmost you know, necessity for them to articulate. And of course, aesthetically satisfying, beautiful, beautiful creations are on our page today. Yes. But you read Sri uh, Shaman and also you read. You know, uh, the novels, you know, Tita Shakti Mudina, is it? Don't forget to read Tita Shakti Mudina, and I'm going to make sure that it takes a picture of it. Yes, sir. If I think that, there is one show that is in the future though, which is having a lot of difficulty to bring, that is drama. So, this was another book, but it came out of the within a few months. So that is finding a lot of difficulty to get to. The syllabus is putting it into the syllabi is really and this has been one strategy which we also have Arjun Ramdev and Vyasa Gita ourselves. Poison Bridge. I feel like Poison Bridge is only the Maharashtra. Marathi, yes. It's only Maharashtra in translation. Maharashtra in translation. That is the text we have, but I've had no to university. And the Maharashtra Gita is also in Maharashtra. But there are some other very important books that we should include. Poison Bridge. Arjun Ramdev one day took me to. Living and longing in the environment is important because in one of my visits to Mumbai, he took me to all the places where they organized it during 1972. That was an eye opener for us. That was you have to be an activist. When you are reading a text, you should be an activist. We don't need good researchers. I think in front of Sri we need to change the society, we need more activists in research. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We have minds to go before we speak, right? Now, to render the motion to thanks, I would request one of the most popular English teachers of the Dr. Women's College and also the NAC coordinator, Dr. Amit Nagy Sakhaboshi, to render the motion to thanks. Again, that was unexpected from the early, as usual. The raised me. Thank you, Gandhi, for this. Thank you for being a wonderful anchor throughout the session. So, first, thanks goes to you. Now, I would like to thank all our resource persons for being so kind to us and giving us so much time. And they will be sure they talk about education, talk about agitation. Education happened today, unlearning also happened today. And agitation will be there, organization also will be there. I know only you, but I know that also the professor has given me some courage to know from. Uh, to refer to this work, I think moving the center is one of the books that you would be wrote, and I think uh, there is a lot of scope for moving the center in terms of culture and making it to the to the focus. And uh, it has been happening, it has been happening to these scholars. It could happen to you, you also. You will be the top players in the in the coming days. So you have learned a lot. You have got a lot of wonderful opportunity. And uh, especially the first semester students, they have uh, internal assessment on this seminar as a part of the, their uh, curriculum. We have been, done that. I know many of them are asking us for this, but uh, I know by now you know that you have uh, not been into this, uh, not been into any kind of trouble. Now you have a lot of knowledge regarding this, and you can use it. And you can do subject assignments and study poetry very soon. So we have a uh, link for this and. Uh, I would like to thank formerly Dr. Professor Shikha Mukherjee, Professor of English, West Bengal State University, Professor Dr. Joyadi Sarangi, sir, Principal, New Alipur College, Kolkata, and Professor of English. Both of them are eminent scholars and uh, Shikha Man is an eminent translator. Dr. Sarangi, sir, is an eminent poet, modern poet. I also would like to thank Dr. Kostin Mordul, sir, for being so kind to us and giving us time and he 
speaking up as a certain text. It was extremely important and enlightening and uh, trying to give a map of how education can take place, how uh, the, the distinction between scholars and, and activists should be blurred. That point has been marked by all the all the three speakers today, and that is the most important thing that we need to take home today. So thank you, sir, Mr. Mondo, sir, for being us, being uh, there and enlightening us regarding the Sarit literature and this translation. You would also like to thank Dr. Mohan and the Chancellor, principal and patron of this seminar, principal of Luka Kaurudis College, for uh, giving us the opportunity and also all kinds of help so that we can organize this seminar in this manner. And uh, then I would like to extend our thanks to Dr. Devan Pali. Principal Rural Government College for collaborating with us to organize this seminar. I would also like to thank all the faculty members of the college, Rural Government College, especially the head of the department, Dr. Monitor Chatterjee, and also Professor Shambhik Tapal, Tapal, for being here and attending the seminar in person. Thank you, everyone, for attending the seminar and collaborating with us. Hopefully, we will have more collaborations in the future. And then I would like to thank all the teachers of the Department of English, Buddha Women's College, Dr. Chandima Das, Dr. Shamasri Maji, Dr. Runa Chalaji, Dr. Ambamini, Dr. Oli Mukherjee, and Dr. Dimon Yogi for being there with all kinds of help and all kinds of uh, support to organize this seminar. And they have uh, been instrumental in doing all the things. Thank you, all the teachers, for doing that. And then, last but not the least, our students. I know the lot of thanks is uh, being long, but uh, you are the most important stakeholder again. I always repeat this. It is for you that we are doing everything. It is for you that we are existing here. And all the teachers and all the great scholars are coming here today. So, make the most of it. We are going to organize seminars of this sort as and when we can. But make the most of it. Try to attend this, even if it is not part of the interviews, please do attend and engage. Thank you for being there. They have been extremely helpful, especially students of us. They have arranged everything, the entire stage, everything. They have actually cleaned the entire auditorium. It doesn't look that clean, yet it is, I can assure you that it is quite clean, cleaner than it was before. All because of our students. So they have decorated this property in very, they have a huge amount of work for them. Thank you, thank you so much. Please be there and study art and uh, be an activist. Then the uh, scholar, uh, scholarly things will follow you. So sure, so sure of that. Thank you, thanks a lot for this. Thank you. 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 Thank you.